to understand, I don't say this just generally for anybody who sometimes has trouble reading poetry, because often the way poetry is taught to us, especially in grade school, and as I was mentioning, even in university, is treated as being as some kind of specimen you've got to like poke at under a microscope in order to understand what it means. And what too many teachers and professors forget is that every poem is actually somebody's statement of emotion. No matter how highfalutin the language, no matter how uh, solidly and densely constructed that organization of words may seem or actually be, at the end of the day, that statement, however long it is, however short it is, is someone's emotional perception of reality or dream or whatever, but there's always an emotional perception. And so I think the, the, uh, the necessity for the reader of poetry um, is in fact to read it aloud. If it's short enough that you can do that, then you should read it aloud because reading it aloud, like an actor has to read a script aloud. The reason why you do that is so you can try to find the emotional rationale for those statements for the statement that the language makes. What is its emotional rationale? And look, 99% of the time there is one. 99% of the time the poem is written because the poet has something to say, something to get off his, her, their chest. Yeah, that's the reason why it exists. Even if they're giving the speech of the poem to a character or a few characters, um, there's still an emotional underpinning there. Even if the poem is humorous, even if it's meant to make you laugh, there is a humorous there is an emotional underpinning uh, to that organization of words. So if you can find the emotion, you will find the rationale for the poem. You'll be able to say what the poem means because you'll be able to feel your way to the meaning by reading it aloud. I didn't grow up valuing my own language. Uh, uh, the Black Nova Scotian vernacular, African Nova Scotian vernacular, English. Of course, the, the language I used in the school year was not the same language I used in the classroom, or else uh, the neighborhood kids would have pummeled me into the ground for acting too white or being too uh, uh, hoity-toity for my own good. But I certainly did understand from a very young age that, that uh, it was going to be standard English in the classroom, standard English at home, definitely. My parents were, uh, neither of them was very much into slang of any sort uh, and, or jive talk. No, not a bit. But they couldn't police the school year. They couldn't police the playground. And there, in order to survive, I had to uh, uh, you know, basically absorb uh, the lingo, the jive, the slang, the uh, uh, except for the four-letter words and gutter talk, I avoided all that. But because my parents would have just yeah, not been very happy, would ever come home spouting any of that kind of stuff. But everything else, I did pick up. Um, but it was it was uh, very late in my in my development as a poet that I became comfortable with with African Nova Scotian with Black English with Blackened English, as I call it. One more thing I need to say about this for anyone who is who is venturing to think that you might just want to publish a book uh, or publish some poetry, please do, because it is the most beautiful and rewarding art form in letters that you could ever have. I'm not jealous of the novelists. Let them sell their gazillion books. It's okay. I'm not even jealous of the playwrights who wish they could sell gazillions of books. They can't. <laughs> just like poets. I'm not jealous of any of them. Um, and, and, and I think that this, this community of people who dare to try to express their hearts through their vocabulary, their God-given vocabulary, which is not English as you know it. One other thing I've got to say very quickly is that for a poet who's writing in English, English is not your language. English is not your language. Your language is your vocabulary. The words that are yours, that you have grabbed out of the English language as you've grown up, as you've, as you've uh, conversed 
with parents and siblings and friends and neighborhood chums and classmates and and professors and teachers and 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 folks in your workplace or whatever it may be uh or folks in your in your uh, faith community whatever it may be you have gathered from all of those sources as well as the books you've read the movies you've watched the songs you listen to your language which is yours only you only belongs to you even your closest confidant your spouse your child nobody else has the language that you have the gift of a poet the duty of a poet is to bring the language that is only yours to life and to allow others to enter into your uh, universe which is composed only of your vocabulary the more you honor your vocabulary the better a poet you will be. The more you respect your own words, the more others will be enchanted by them. This is exactly what you need to do as a poet. <laughs>